tutorials.com. My name is Bradford. In this video, we are talking about the Chase Bliss and Benson collab, the Automaton preamp Mark II. Two incredible builders of in their own right. Chris Benson is an amp builder. What he did was take the preamp section of his amp and put it in a pedal. From really clean tones, lightly overdriven, medium overdriven, heavy driven, fuzz even kind of sounds when you crank up the gain on the pedal. It had a treble knob, it had a bass knob, volume and gain. Very cool. I used one. I had one. It's great. It's a great pedal. Joel Cordy makes some of the most wild pedals, the most imaginative pedals I have ever heard, I've ever seen. I have tried a lot of them, a lot of them. I own a handful. I've tried some others that I don't even own anymore, um, and I wish I did because some of them he doesn't make anymore. Uh, but in short, he takes common pedal types, effect types that we've all heard or own, and he adds his spin on them and adds switches and the ability to adjust the parameters of those pedals live uh, or automatically. For instance, my favorite pedal ever created, Joel, you made it, the Chase Bliss Gravitas. It's a tremolo pedal. So these two dudes and their teams of ladies and dudes came together to create this preamp Mark II. The preamp is a variation of Joel's Automaton series. He has another one where he teamed up with Maris and they made a reverb, which is on my list to check out next. <laughs> right here the jump button it's it's meant for preset stuff um, basically you can call it up and tell it where you want to jump to if you want to jump to the middle of a bank kind of thing the mids are what the next two buttons are talking about here uh, you can set the mids first you have to turn them on and when you turn them on you can set pre-dirt or poster which that really will change things next is the width of the queue for the mids that you're going to be adjusting and so you can pick more narrow a little wider or the widest uh, right above that button are two sliders for the mids. The mids 
slider specifically than the frequency slider. Frequency lets you choose the mids frequency you want to adjust, and then the mid slider is how much. Next is the diode button. Also, these are arcade buttons. They're super cool. This pedal aesthetically is very pleasing, and those buttons, the tactile feeling is very pleasing as well. Um, the diode selection, if you have it off, basically what you are doing is you're only using the pedal as it's like the, the Benson preamp pedal. If you turn on the silicone diode or the germanium diode, those are kind of seeking to capture or give you a bass tone reminiscent of a tube screamer and a clon respectively. Tube screamers are built using silicone diodes, clons are built using germanium diodes, uh, and you can just, if you select one of those, you will get a sound in that territory. The addition of a three band EQ and more specifically, as we talked about, being able to really hone in or really focus on what mid frequency you want to adjust really means this pedal can get about any sound you want, just like that. But there is also a fuzz option. There's a gated open fuzz. The difference between gated and open, I will choose open 95% of the time. I typically don't even choose fuzz to begin with, but I'm gonna use fuzz. I want that open sound. Um, you can dial some of the weird, like real muffled thing out that fuzz is kind of known for by using the EQ, mids, treble, pulling some blows out, which is cool. Uh, the gated sound is gonna do exactly what it sounds like though. It's gonna sound like there's a noise gate. You stop playing, it kind of chokes. More specifically though, you can choose the diode you want when you're using fuzz to get even more specific. So if you take whatever that is, the three different diodes you can use on their own and then take the different versions of fuzz you can use with the different diode selections. When you look at all of that, there are so many different sounds that this pedal can cover. It almost feels like it should have cost way more. I understand that the price of this unit is point of contention uh, for some people, but if you consider all that and you kind of figure all that together and the fact that you got MIDI controls and the fact that it looks cool with the moving sliders, which I get, it's aesthetic more than anything, I think. Now the sliders I find very useful because when I call up a preset, it shows me exactly how I set that sound up. And so if I need to make an adjustment, I'm not guessing. Some pedals, you can move the knob and when it gets to where the knob is placed, the light changes color or whatever. And that's that's great and that's totally doable. And But this unit right here makes it super easy to see where you're at and that may not seem important to many people, but to me, if I need to make a slight adjustment, it allows me to think, okay, so do, should I change it on this preset or do I need to change presets? Let's talk about presets and how I personally utilize them. I go zero to nines in one bank. There's three banks, so 30 presets. Zero to nine, 10 presets. Um, I go from low gain to high gain, and nine is actually a fuzz, and like I mentioned earlier, I don't use fuzz quite that often. Um, but starting at zero, all the way working up till eight. I have different variations of using like just the straight Benson sound or adding a silicone diode for a tube screamer thing or adding a germanium diode for a clawing kind of thing. And then I've also dialed something in that sounds a little more like distortion. All in all, this pedal gets me all I could need. It is currently the only overdrive pedal on my board. I have a Keeley Katana, which is a clean boost, and that's about all I use it for. I will use it to boost the preamp, but sometimes it's like, would I rather step on the Katana or just bank up a preset on the preamp? It just depends. I like having a few different options for each different diode selection. And so that's how I utilize it. And sometimes I'll pick up my, I'll pick a different guitar for the set for that week and I'll be playing and I'll realize in the moment it doesn't sit as well and I can quickly adjust it. I have a page set up on the unit, on my RJM unit, and I can scroll up to different preset and no problem. Or if I need to adjust the preset itself, I can do that and then just save it on the pedal itself. Very easy. No problem at all.
gonna show you some sounds. I'm gonna try to make this quick but informative. We're gonna start on the fuzz. Um, it's preset nine for me. A fuzz pedal does not like to see anything but the input directly from your guitar. The reason you don't like fuzz may not just be because you actually don't like fuzz. It may be because you're not aware of this. Also, this is a bog streak pick. I'm not entirely sure what they call this one. They have lots of cool names. I'm gonna drop it, subtitle this. These picks are super cool. This is a random side note that I'm including in this video. These little bumps in here actually serve to give some little sounds similar to how I would use a Herndom. Um, but anyways, quick shout out to those guys. I'm using my Elliott Tone Master. It is their proprietary P90 pickups, which give you like a really, really fat Strat sound with the crispiness of P90s in a way, in all the right ways, um, is how I liken it. Um, I'm also using a Worship Tutorials preset of a 2002 Korg Era Vox with the Alnica Blues, Alnico neck pickup. A little bright, but that's how I like it. Bridge pickup. A little crisp, but that is also how I like it. Yes, now I... We'll show you the fuzz. I love it. Yeah, fuzz can be used for way more then I think at least those of us in the praise and worship world might give it credit for. Um, I really like it. And um, like I said, not to fall to the pedal, it's just fuzz. I, I keep this in a loop and uh, it makes it a little difficult to use fuzz in the way that's, you know, for lack of a, yeah, it's more, I wouldn't say accurate or correct or proper, whatever. It's just, it just makes it hard because then you lose some of the tenacity that the sound gives you. I don't know, it's felt like the right word. Anyways, let's move along. This is the Benson Pre. We're gonna just stay right here and I'm gonna kind of show you um, some sounds. This is the Benson Pre. Let's do this. Let's start everything at zero. You should know what to expect with that. Hey, hey, no surprises there. The volume and gain are very, very, very interactive. In this case, the volume's all the way up and we're not even at unity because there's no gain losing a little bit so let's give it a little game this is very reminiscent to me in my mind very reminiscent of the benson pre um, i don't have both to compare so let's utilize this more in the way that i would use it i use it to push a little bit of trouble because as you add gain it does get a little bassy just like an amp not too much bass to kind of even it out though it feels different right it feels different to add bass um, and to add treble as opposed to not adding bass and adding lots of treble so here's bass sound that very well could be because of the fact that I made this preset or used it last on a single coil guitar. What I find is that I generally don't have to alter gain. If I want a different feel or sound, I can cycle up or cycle back a preset. Um, but sometimes you can just tell that the preset doesn't sound the way you want it to because you may be created for a different style pickup. So that was brighter than I would like. <laughs> a little bit better. Um, that sound doesn't sound too different from my bass sound, though. Like, it does, but 
it doesn't <laughs> if you're following. So sometimes I will utilize this just to kind of like goose up a neck pickup lead um, if I'm trying to keep it clean, but I also don't want to have to dig because I really like digging and having some body in my sound. That's just a preferential thing. So here's some effects without the lead line. Here's some effects without the preamp on the lead line. Here's it with some. And here's some verb because that's what we do. Let me kind of show you the, the range of the gain here. Now, as I kind of go up in gain, I may want to bring some of that bass down, which is very true to how you'd probably um, alter an amp. One way that the Benson preamp pedal is kind of characterized or kind of described is that it can get into like a spitty fuzz thing when you crank the gain. So here's that. I wouldn't say it's like straight up fuzz. You just heard that. But you can definitely tell that it's not quite as smooth as overdrive, at least to me. So like you could pull back some of that because it's interesting how all of a sudden it gets a little brighter. Let's add some mids. So, I mean, just adding a little bit of mids really took this like over the top and almost started changing it into just a little bit changing into overdrive or uh, distortion. <laughs> I don't know, kids. You make your own calls. You do it. <laughs> you do as you see fit. Let's talk about germanium setting. Let's talk about how that's like a clon in some ways. So I've never played a clon. I can't really say. Um, all I can can do is kind of take a, that little bit of knowledge that clons use germanium diodes and kind of alter uh, or kind of adjust sounds in a way that I feel follows suit with that. So this is like my lower gain clon sound. Um, <laughs> little bright again it could be because of what I did last time so reminder if you find yourself using a sound that does not fit your guitar quite as well you can clearly see what you have it set at right real easy to make an adjustment you know <laughs> Not liking how bright that got on this guitar, but I'm liking that. So you make the adjustment. All you got to do is press and hold to save. Here is my clon sound. Again, this is a lower gain sound. Really just meant to alter my bass tone. Give me a little extra hair without really pushing. I like it, but let's kind of crank some stuff up. Here's some more gain. nice. To me, at the end of the day, the reason why I pick a lot of different drives is 
first off, what are they based off of? What's the sound they're going for? But even then, I may have, I've had a couple blues breaker style drives on my board at the same time because the way the builder went about creating that blues breaker was very different from the way the other builder did. Uh, case in point, King of Tone and then um, a Bondi Breakers. But they're approached very differently and almost to the point where even though I knew that, I forgot that there was a blues breaker style thing inside of the breakers. Um, so really, I think the reason why I will choose a certain sound I've made over another, they may have similar gain, but it also kind of comes down to the feeling under my fingers. And that's something I identify with. I don't know if you do too. Maybe you just go with it. And you don't think much of that. I really feel like I identify with a tube screamer, well, which transition, being a perfect drive to use for leads and uh, a really nice certain kind of mid sound I like for like big soaring chords, sustained chords. <laughs> Screamers, you may be aware, are known for basically dumping highs and lows to kind of just push mids, which means you lose some of your lows and your highs. And so this, yet again, perfect example of why these faders are so great. You can see what's happening. You can see how you can add things. I really, really like it, especially for like a neck pickup style lead, which I love using two screamers for. <laughs> Yes, let's push some gain. One thing I thought of when I saw this was, okay, but when you're switching presets, what happens? What happens when you're trying to switch from a, like a lower gain setting to a bigger gain setting? And do you hear a drop in audio? Well, quick answer, no, you do not. So what do you hear? What you hear is your knobs just moving and changing, which is what you would hear if you stepped on something anyways. So I'll kind of show you what I would, how it would work roughly from me going to like a rhythm sound to lead and hearing how things jump. This button right here, the jump means it's gonna take me to preset five. You can see that if I hit this off, it, wasn't, it won't do anything, it'll just cycle up. If I hit this, it'll actually take me to preset zero. Um, but if I hit in red, take me to preset five, which is more gain. <laughs> love this thing. Um, it'll be sticking around for sure. Thank you so much to Joel uh, for allowing me to check this out and do this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and checking this out. Hey, um, if you would like to see more gear demos, uh, pedal demos, whatever, let us know what you'd like to see in the comments below. If you got something specific, um, we'll see if we can figure out. And uh, if you have not subscribed, please do that. Like this video, hit the bell, all that YouTube jargon we got to say. Thank you so much for your support, everybody. Thank you for checking this out. We will see you next time.